Hi, I'm Marise, and I'm going to be talking about the placebo effect. So I've been fascinated with the words, the placebo effect. The idea has been roaming around my mind for the past four months, and I just can't stop obsessing about it. <laughs> so let's begin. Do you remember that scene in Harry Potter where Harry gives Ron liquid luck? Liquid luck being a potion that gives the user luck for a certain amount of time. In the next scene, we see Ron like dominating Quidditch and becoming the best Gryffindor in all of his house. But then we see a catch. Harry never actually gave Ron live and real liquid luck. It was all a placebo. And what Harry went through was the placebo effect. Let's get into it. What is a placebo? The placebo is a treatment with no active medical properties. It is often the control group in a clinical trial and is used to test the efficiency of a drug. What is the placebo effect? The effect refers to the physiological phenomena that usually happens to the control group that is given the placebo treatment. Why does this matter at all? This has been my journey. <laughs> so why does this matter? The condition of the control group often improves, is comparable, and sometimes even better than the test group, even though they aren't given any active drugs. How does this happen? This really drove my research into what it's going to present right now. And this is a question that really brought me into the red circle. <laughs> First is bedside manner. Researchers believe that the efficiency of the placebo effect is a result of a good doctor and patient relationship. It is true that a good doctor and patient relationship actually helps the patient perform better in surgeries or other medical treatments. But it is doubtful that bedside manner could explain the entirety of the placebo effect because of the fact of, because of the physiological phenomena behind it. Next we have C.W.F. McClare. He has a PhD and is from Oxford and he's a biologist. He studied the way cells react to different treatments and found that the protein found in cells react better to vibrational excitations or energy rather than chemicals. So this proves in part the placebo effect because brain waves aren't kind of like vibrational excitations that he used. And if his work could be put to use with brain waves, then we could prove the, the placebo effect. His work later inspired Bruce Lipton. He has a PhD in cellular biology. His theory is that during the course of evolution, cells started to relinquish their individual power to the brain to create the possibility for a more efficient survival. He states that if this theory is correct, then his next theory, which is emotions can become so powerful that they can override the system, the system being our bodies, is proven. <laughs> I don't know how to explain. Lipton believes that through the use of energy psychologies, one can eventually eventually develop a control over their, subconscious, over their subconscious mind. So what is the conscious and the subconscious mind? The conscious mind is 5% of your brain. There, you, cr you create the decision to talk, speak, or walk. You came to TED. You consciously made the decision to come to TED. But the subconscious mind is the decisions that you don't have control over. Your heart is beating, you are breathing, you are blinking, but you don't consciously make that choice. That is the other 95% of your brain. So how does this happen and what does this mean? So scientists have really gone into what is the subconscious brain? How does it work and how can we control it? And there have been a lot of proof that through meditation and other, psych like other energy psychologies, one can eventually develop a control. And if one could develop a control, then we would have control over our brains, control over our immune system, and control over our health, which is what Bruce Lipton was trying to say through the evolution. But what does the placebo effect mean for modern medicine? Well, it could mean money loss because the medical industry relies on illnesses. And if a patient stops being ill, then how are they going to cure them? You can't actually sell belief to people. You can't buy, oh, take this tablet of belief. It's not possible. And hospitals in Mexico make an average of 500 Mexican pesos per patient. So if hospitals were to invest in the placebo effect, then the income would deteriorate significantly. But 
On the other hand, it could also mean the end to terminal cancers. By learning how to literally duplicate our own cells, doctors could teach patients how to fight off cancerous cells to create a longer lifetime. Is the placebo effect a long-term solution? In my opinion, no, because it is not measurable. Sometimes the effect doesn't even happen. Sometimes the patient lies about their symptoms, and sometimes the effect is not always the same between all of the control group. So there is no way of knowing like, oh, he got cured, but why didn't he get cured? And overall, the use of modern medicine has been more effective at saving lives. Thank you.